Hey everybody, Jen Hailey here. This week I'm sharing my research experiences and opinions around getting the COVID-19 vaccine with chronic Lyme disease. I know this is a hot button issue and I understand the fear and hesitancy around getting a vaccine or really any medical treatment while you're chronically ill. And especially for us Lyme patients, um, having to deal with a medical system that doesn't even really believe in our illness, um, it is easy to have a lot of mistrust and just um, feel a little bit weary about jumping into anything new like this. So in this video, I'm just going to share my research around how I came about my decision and you can learn more. I always like to put my sources down in the description below. This is not medical advice. This is not to be taken in lieu of medical advice. I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, I'm just sharing, you know, how I came around my own personal decision. And I believe that we all have to just weigh the risks and benefits for ourselves to make those informed decisions. All right, so whenever I am faced with a tough decision like this, I usually just weigh the pros and cons. So some of the pros of getting the vaccine are that, you know, with the stimulated immune system that I have with chronic Lyme, endometriosis, IBS, all of the things that I've been diagnosed with, um, I'm, at, I'm considered high risk for those severe COVID symptoms. And so the vaccine could really reduce the risk of those severe symptoms. And um, that sounds like a huge pro to me. Another pro would be that I uh, would feel less anxiety going out to the grocery store or wherever. Um, I'd feel a lot less anxious about it. I would be able to hug my friends and family again and potentially even uh, be able to travel and go visit my family. Some of the cons are unknown efficacy or side effects from this vaccine for people with autoimmune illness or stimulated immune systems. With any treatment really, there's a risk of a Lyme flare, so that's a con. And another con, it just doesn't sound fun. It sounds like a terrible time to me. I do not want to get anything needly anymore. I've had enough needles in my life and it, I, it goes in your muscles so you get a sore arm sounds like a con to me. All right, now that I had my pros and cons, I start thinking up some of the questions that I had, like how in the world did they come up with this thing so quickly? How will it impact those of us with autoimmune disease or stimulated immune systems, or even those on immune suppressive drugs? And how does it work? So firstly, I looked into how they created this vaccine so quickly and um, what I found was just an incredible amount of collaboration that's like never been seen before basically. They um, collaborated worldwide on this. A massive amount of funding was also poured into it. They also sped up the trials, which sounds a little bit sketchy, right? But actually what they did, they didn't actually shorten the phases. They did a tiered phase testing. So they didn't wait for the full phase one to finish before starting phase two. And again, just an incredible amount of collaboration and um, funding in it to be able to do that. They also were reliant on existing research. A lot of things floating around out there calling this experimental or like brand new or whatever, but it is brand new to the public's ears, but it has actually been in development and study since the 90s. So learning all of that stuff, I started feeling a little bit better about it, but I wanted to know what were uh, the autoimmune illness organizations saying um, so I started looking into the Lupus Foundation, arthritis, endometriosis, IBS, um, Crohn's disease, uh, Hashimoto's, dysautonomia, just all the different, um, you know, things that come along usually with Lyme disease or, or common misdiagnosis of Lyme disease. I just wanted to see what those experts were saying. 
and across the board I found them really recommending to get the COVID-19 vaccine and saying that um, those of us with stimulated immune systems, overtaxed immune systems, autoimmune illness, um, all of that, you're likely higher risk for severe symptoms. So the vaccine's a very good idea. Of course, it always recommends speaking with your doctor, especially if you're in like a big flare or um, you're on um, heavy treatments or if you're on immune suppressive drugs or um, I think, you know, just certain drugs are probably they want you to stop for a few days before the vaccine. So it's a good idea to talk to your doctor for sure. But across the board, they were saying um, we recommend getting the vaccine. So learning all of that and watching all of the YouTubes and all of the things, I still was like, mm, I am feeling a little better about it, but I want to know how does this work? So I started doing research on how this actual... Um, vaccine works in the body and since I'm not a microbiologist I'm not even gonna try but I will pass it off I'm going to share a clip here from Pro Professor Dave explains and I highly recommend checking out his YouTube channel and this full video to learn more about how vaccines in general work the most frequent talking points regarding the COVID vaccines as most have heard, the Pfizer and Moderna COVID vaccines are mRNA vaccines, and they are the first of their kind. As such, many people are worried about what they view as brand new experimental technology. This is not the case. Moderna has been working on this technology for over a decade. The RNA in Moderna refers to RNA. The company formed specifically to develop mRNA technology, including vaccines. That's why they beat dozens of other companies to the punch. Scientists have been working on this for a while, so the pertinent research had already been done. Once the novel coronavirus genome was sequenced, the vaccine was developed immediately. Still, people speculate about the vaccine altering our DNA. This is physically impossible. The way things work inside our cells is that DNA acts as a template for enzymes to build mRNA during a process called transcription, which then serves as a template for a ribosome to build a protein during a process called translation. Check out my biochemistry and biology tutorials if you want more details on this process, but that's the quick version. The mRNA in the vaccine acts as a template for our cells to build the viral spike protein that behaves as an antigen, which our immune cells can then interact with to build the antibodies. Then the mRNA gets degraded along with all of the other mRNA molecules our cells produce every day. That's how the vaccine works, and that's why this approach is brilliant. Any risk associated with using an attenuated virus is gone because there is no virus or viral particle being injected at all. It can't be stressed enough that there is no mechanism by which mRNA can produce DNA in the human body, nor implement DNA into the human genome. It is literally impossible. Next, there is a lot of concern regarding what some perceive as a rushed process. Again, while it was the fastest rollout of a vaccine in history, this still isn't accurate. When we say that the vaccine was fast-tracked, we are saying that long regulatory periods were eliminated. Basically, all the bureaucratic hurdles and red tape, which would normally delay vaccine development, were removed for obvious reasons. The clinical trials themselves were not abbreviated in any way. It is simply that phase two was being planned while phase one was underway, rather than waiting for approval to begin due to the state of emergency. The same going from phase two to phase three. This is where huge chunks of time were saved. Clinical trials were completed. No one is a guinea pig. People getting the vaccine are not being experimented upon. They are just getting a vaccine. These vaccines were tested just as rigorously as any other. That medical professionals have nearly unanimously been getting this vaccine the moment it is made available to them should be everything you need to know regarding its safety as they are best equipped to assess its safety and they all get it. There have been many instances of large scale emergency vaccinations in the past, such as the one in Yugoslavia in the 1970s in response to the last smallpox outbreak that ever occurred. So once I learned how it works, how our body is constantly um, getting rid of this mRNA 
anyway. And um, having my mom and my brother go through both shots without any incidents, having friends um, go through who are severely ill with autoimmune illness, cancer, um, thyroid stuff. Um, they both got both shots and we're doing fine with it. Thinking back on my time in the Air Force when I had undiagnosed Lyme and I was like actively sick with Lyme, I was getting um, live virus vaccines every six months in the Air Force and I was doing fine with those. So, and, you, know, you know, I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to be okay with this. So I made the appointment and I started feeling a little bit nervous after I made the appointment, like, ooh, is this the right thing to do? Am I gonna be okay? Um, you know, with any, any treatment or anything I do, there's always a risk of a Lyme flare or a setback. And um, so I was a little worried about that, but when I just, whenever those fears would come up, I would just kind of close my eyes, connect with my breath and really think about like, okay, I know I, I can feel this like uncertainty about getting the shot. How would it feel if I de de decline and just don't get the shot at all? And I would actually get more anxious and more fearful about not getting the shot. So I knew I had made the right decision. So I went ahead and recorded um, some clips from the day of my shot, the day after, and I'll go ahead and cut those in right now. Hey everyone, I am back from getting the shot. It actually wasn't as painful as I thought, um, and I've had no reactions so far. My self-care for the day is just, I'm planning on resting, drinking lots and lots of water, two ounces every 15 minutes or so to help flush the cells. I just had a huge glass of celery juice and lemon juice. I'm gonna be doing milk thistle tea throughout the day, kind of just helping my body flush everything out and doing some breath work, meditation, and just really resting and kind of nurturing myself for the next week. Um, and then I'll do another video. If I've got any kind of symptoms or anything, I'll let you know. And I'm gonna do another video um, next dose. So they already made my appointment for 21 days from now. So I will be getting the second dose of Moderna. And yeah, so I'll let you know if I have any issues or anything with it, but feeling pretty good. The shot didn't even really hurt as bad as I thought it was gonna. So that was nice. And um, yeah, I'll keep you updated. All right, see you soon. Fun filter alert. Mm. So I just thought I would give you a 24 hour vax update. I got my vaccine yesterday at 11 a.m. And as I shared yesterday, my arm started hurting pretty bad um, last night. So I iced it and I think that was a really good move because it's definitely not as sore today. And I was even able to do my push-ups this morning, no problem. So. Feeling pretty good, no ill effects whatsoever. I did get a little extra tired last night. I think, um, you know, it was either from waking up so early to go get the shot or maybe just from the shot itself. But I slept like a rock and I'm feeling pretty good today. So I'll keep you all updated. Um, 48 hour post vax update, everybody. I am feeling great. I had a mild headache come around 4 p.m. yesterday. And it like came and went throughout the afternoon and then it came back a little bit stronger in the towards bedtime but it was not anywhere near the headaches I've dealt with with Lyme disease or Epstein-Barr or anything like that it was just like a mild kind of pressure headache and um, I drank a lot of water I woke up two times in the night to pee I didn't have a headache at all and then I woke up this morning no headache slightly swollen glands underneath my armpits. Um, I took my hot cold shower like I do, did my breath work, and they went right down. So I think I'm out of the woods everybody because uh, everybody I've talked to said the first 48 hours was the worst of it and I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm hoping the second shot goes just as smooth for me. 
So here I am 72 plus hours later, still feeling fine. I haven't had any flare ups or weird symptoms at all today. My next shot is at the end of this month and I'm going to go ahead and make another video sharing my experience with that. And again, you know, this is not medical advice. I, I'm just sharing what I've done and um, you can find all my sources down in the description. I did do a lot of detoxing. So I even brought a bottle of water with me when I got the shot and just started drinking water immediately. I've been doing, um, you know, all my kind of normal like Lyme detox stuff. So if you haven't yet, make sure to visit my website, jenhyla.com and get your free copy of the Lyme Ease Herx Guidebook. This contains all my top um, detox tips and uh, video tutorials and a downloadable breathwork practice. I hope you find this information helpful. Again, you know, check out the description below. Please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe on this video. It will help more people uh, find my video and help me to continue creating free content for the Lyme community. Thanks so much. And I will see you in a few weeks after shot number two. Until then, keep healing. Bye.